So ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to welcome to Lubbock and to welcome to this podium our special speaker for the evening, General James E. Livingston. Thank you very much. Take a seat. Take a seat. You know, I was just listening to the auctioneer, and I'm not up here to sell anything except we live in a greater country. That's what I'm up here to sell. <laughs> but thank you very much for inviting us out. And let me also note for the Metal Bond recipients, we have absolutely have a wonderful stay in Lubbock. You've got a great city. A very patriotic city, and we have had a great time today. And I must give you a little secret. Now, this is something I want you to really keep to yourself. I went over to the Buddy Holly Museum today. Here I am, listening to Buddy Holly. Here I am, daydreaming. I'm daydreaming about 1957, riding around in my 1957 Ford with my high school honey. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and that all came back today. So I'll be in trouble for the next two weeks. <laughs> but it was a delightful visit and a great stay. Then we went over to your college, Texas Tech. <laughs> what a great football stadium. But I also began to ask about the football team. <laughs> and I was getting a lot of grins about the Mustangs. <laughs> so we may have to work on the Mustangs on my next trip out here. <laughs> Let me also note for our Metal Water recipients, uh, you realize there's only 73 recipients left, and you got ten, almost 10% 10 of them here in uh, Lubbock, Texas tonight. <laughs> We're here for a reason tonight, and that's a reason to remember our brother George, George O'Brien. George O'Brien was one of the exceptional Marines, a great Marine, a great friend, and a great family man. He served his corps, and he served his country all his life to the best of his ability. And as we remember George tonight, I remember him as a brother in arms, as someone as a fellow Marine I dearly loved. And he meant so much to all of us that George touched. And we miss George. And we have some of his family here tonight. And I'd like to introduce those members of the family. We got Terry O'Brien. Where's Terry at? See you around. Terry. We got Michael O'Brien. Where's Michael at? And I believe we have one of his daughters here. Is that correct? Okay. And the reason I say that, I don't have that in my notes. <laughs> Let me thank you for coming. And I'll tell you, we just really just think about your father every day. We have members of the Benavides family here tonight also. Would you stand? I did There is another great story about a Medal of Honor recipient. You need to read his story and who he was and what he did for this great nation. And we're just pleased to have you here tonight. Let me say to the people who've been involved with this event all weekend, you have done an absolutely superb job. I mean, you couldn't do any better for your country, for your city and you couldn't do any better for the O'Brien family and your fellow brothers. So guys and ladies, thank you very much for all your hard work.
But the veterans groups, the Purple Heart, all the other veterans groups, let me thank you so very much for all your hard work. I know these things are tough to do, and when you're working with just volunteers, it makes it even tougher. But you will call us behind this particular effort, and I'll tell you, the reflections of your efforts are here tonight. You've done absolutely a superb job. So simplify and congratulations to the hotel and all the restaurant staff. They've done a superb job since we've been here. And we want to thank them for all their hard work and what they have contributed to this effort. They've done a great job, and we really thank you for taking care of us and really giving us great chow, the food we get. <laughs> We'd like to uh, thank the Marine Color Guard, the JROTC units from Plainview, as well as the other military members here tonight, and all the great work that you've done. So thank you for your contributions to this evening. Let me also note Jody, and we're leaving him with a lot of tasks. As I was talking to him tonight, he's got to get back to Washington, get something done. <laughs> they almost got there with a the budget. I won't say it very frankly, you Republicans in D.C. got to get off your fanny and get it done. <laughs> the budget's done. I want to see those taxes go down. <laughs> and Karen, as I've said several times, you've got a wonderful setting as we rode around it. It's absolutely clean, neat, and a representative American city in every sense of the word. And everyone we ran across here has been an outpouring of just great people. And as I said when I come down here, I said we're in God's country in the heart of America. And again, to the Gold Star families, I had a chance to meet some of you tonight, and I want to ask you to stand again. God bless you, and I think about all your service and sacrifice. <laughs> having been a Marine in Vietnam, and uh, having been a commander, and having had to order some young men to their death based on operational requirements. That's a tough thing to deal with. And everything I go, the time I go up to that wall, I look at about 60 names, and I can almost see all 60 of those Marines. And I always remember those 60 Marines. They were 18 and 19 year old, 20 young Americans. And the thing most of all I remember about them, they never had a chance to be fathers and grandfathers. And that just brings it home to me every time I reflect on that. To the White Star families here tonight, and that's a new term for me, that represents the families that had a member of their family commit suicide. We think of you, we love you, and your sacrifice is just as great as any other sacrifice that's ever been made in war and peace. And God bless you, may your Relative. Rest in peace. You know, Texas has given us great man, and that man is George Herman O'Brien Jr. And uh, George, last time I saw him, he was up in D.C. We were in inauguration together. George was not feeling very good, and shortly after he left the inauguration, George passed away. George was a bigger than life man. He's a man you get around humble man, but you absolutely love George. And he has represented our core, his family, and this country, as well as any other American that has ever served in uniform. So George, we miss you, and I want to say out front, George, I'm sure if he's looking down, he says, I don't want this, Willie. You make it a big deal out of something. And I'm not interested in it, but George, we're interested in having you have it. So that's what the night is all about. George was born on September 10th, 1926 in Fort Worth, and he graduated from high school in Big Springs in 1944. 
and he joined the Merchant Marines at the end of World War II, serving for two years. After that service, he came here to Texas Technical College and earned a Bachelor of Science degree. And in May of 1950, and while here, he enlisted as a private in the United States Marine Corps Reserve in July 1952. George was ordered to active duty on the 27th of November, 1951. And he completed officer's candidate course in February, 1952, and later graduated from the basic course in August that same year. Following completion of uh, continued training at Camp Pendleton, he was sent to Korea in September, 1952. George joined the 1st Marine Division a legendary unit, if you think about Guadalcanal, that's the unit that was at Guadalcanal. He carved out his name in history in both world wars, and then found himself making the history again in the Korean War. George was not content with just being a Marine officer. He wanted to be a combat leader, and he became one of the best on October 27, 1952, as a newly minted second lieutenant. He proved that he was one of the America's best warriors as he led his men into the face of heavy enemy fire to take a hill. Despite his unit being subjected to intense enemy mortar fire, artillery and small arms fire, George emerged from the relative safety of his trench. He ordered his men to follow him as he advanced towards heavily entrenched enemy positions. Despite being shot through the arm and knocked down, he again pursued forward where he engaged the enemy with his M1 carbine, grenades, and in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Knocked to the ground three times by enemy grenade, George stopped to aid a wounded Marine and then continued leading his Marines into the direct assault against bunkers and machine gun positions securing a foothold. After four hours, think of that, four hours of intense fighting, he then consolidated his remaining Marines in a hasty defensive position and prepared for an enemy counterattack. He checked his men, secured the wounded, ensured that his Marines were properly placed to prevent the enemy from reoccupying that hill. George and his Marines held the ground a priest of real estate called the hook, securing the line. George and his Marines prevented that would have been a complete flanking maneuver by the enemy until he was relieved by another unit. Typical of George, <clears throat> he refused his own medical evacuation until all of his wounded and dead had been accounted for and evacuated to safety. One year to the day later, on October the 23rd, 1953. He was summoned to the White House and presented with our nation's highest military award by President Eisenhower, the Medal of Honor. <clears throat> George has also received two Purple Hearts, the Korean Service Medal with two Bronze Stars and the United Nations Service Medal. After Korea, George started the petroleum geologist. He operated his own oil and gas wells West Texas in West Texas and Southeast New Mexico. All the while, he still retained his connection to the United States Marine Corps, thereby continuing his service and was promoted to major in the Marine Reserve in 1963. George also managed a large family and living, he lived absolutely a life of honor. George died on March 11th, 2005 in Midland, Texas. At Texas Tech, as we know tonight, with these great ladies and gentlemen who are leading the charge to remember George in the memorial at his college, I ask you, and I plead with you, to give your full support to this effort. This is a remarkable undertaking, and it will capture George, but most of all, it captures the spirit of this community and the spirit of this nation. In fact, you are part of George. As you engage tonight in this auction and make an effort to make sure we build this memorial, you are looking at George and <clears throat> saying, George, you gave it all. You give to your country. 
you give to the great cause of making this America free and other people free all throughout the world. So as you think of this endeavor tonight, I want you to remember who you are working with, who are you are working for. George was a special man. He believed in his country. He believed in his core. He loved his family. And think what we're doing tonight. We prefer, preserve that legacy of George. Preserving who he is, what he represented. But let me just close and say simply, what this all represents is the greatness of America. It represents who you are and who all of us are. It represents what the expectations of living in this country is all about. As we know, 1%, 1% keep us free. But I want you to think about that 1% in terms of all the people around this country who are free tonight because of that 1%. And that 1% is the greatest force of world power we got for freedom in this country. Think of that. The greatest force multiplier for freedom in this country is that 1%. So when you see someone who is served, who one who is in uniform, I want you to walk up to them and just say thank you. That's all they ask for. And if I'm speaking for George and myself and the other veterans here tonight, we did our job because we love this country. We love what it represents. And we love the opportunity to preserve what we represent. And you think about all the embassies in the world tonight, all the embassies. And you are guaranteed you go to the U.S. Embassy tonight in almost any country in the world of all the other embassies. And you got people circled around that embassy trying to get a trip to America. That's who we are. We are the black light of the world today. If everyone wants to come here and be with us, and the only reason they have the opportunity to come here and be with us is because of that 1% who have done their duty. So to the veterans, to all of you this evening, it's been an absolutely wonderful evening. It's been one of the most moving evenings, frankly, I've been involved in for a long time. I didn't realize I'd be so emotional about this evening. So it's been great. And I know George is looking down. And let me speak for George. George is saying to you, thank you. George is saying, simplify. So God bless you, God bless America, and most of all, God bless Lubbock, Texas. <laughs>